Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the series of I don't know Next.js. Now the initial plan of this video was also that we are going to be discussing this topic in the live session as well. But then I realized there is a lot of writing in this and just sitting there watching me writing is in no good sense at all. It's not a valuable use of your time. So I thought let me just write all these notes because this is purely a theoretical topic first and then we're going to be moving into the practical part. That part will take live. Now, in case you don't know, I have done one live stream in which we discussed a broad overview about the Next.js. The series is all about I don't know Next.js. So first understand the target audience that I'm targeting behind this series. This series is not going to cover every inch of Next.js. This is a fast up and running series on Next.js so that people who already know a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of React.js, they can quickly be up and running with the Next.js. We are not targeting the people who have no idea about React, who have no idea even the higher topics of JavaScript. We are not targeting that audience. This is not a beginner friendly uh, series there. I noticed a few people who are absolutely very beginner who always nitpick the words, uh, try to pick up the each words and then try to comment down and this is not for you. I noticed one of the, one of the student actually uh, messaged me in uh, per personal as well and in the comment section as well that, hey, how can you think that search engine optimization is just the meta tags and rendering? Uh, probably this series is not for you because we are not going to be going into that much of that. This is not a search engine optimization course. This is quickly running up and running with Next.js. So please don't uh, nitpick the words there. Uh, I totally understand what is search engine optimization and it's not just about meta tags. There are a thousand different things. We don't want to go into that mess. We really want to focus broad, quickly onto Next.js. So this is the series continuation with that. Anyways, welcome to the topic. And in this video, we need to discuss four topics which are really, really important before we make our next live session. In the next live session, we'll be working on how we can make web requests and can have some data from the web, can fetch some APIs, and how the some topics like do duping on the Next.js, they work out, how the documentation actually mentioned them, but before that, we need to understand these four topics because they are core essential of making anything in the Next.js and why we use Next.js on the first place. So we'll discuss about them later on. But this topic is going to be uh, directly targeting the four topics. So let me walk you through with that. So here is the notes that I've made for you. Yes, I wrote them. <laughs> can you believe that? So here are the new web dev terms that we have. And as you can see, the first term here is CSR, the client side rendering what they mean, how they work, I'll definitely discuss that. You don't have to worry. First, just understand, uh, we programmers love to have these kinds of short notation. Everything is just short notation for us. Uh, so this is the introduction of that. So first time is we have is a CSR that we have. Then we have this SSR, which is server side rendering. Keep that in mind, client side rendering, server side rendering. What they are, I'll explain that. You never have to watch any video again after this. Then we have SSG, which is static site generation. Yes, a lot of word. And then we have ISR, incremental static regeneration. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of things are here. So let me just walk you through with the process of how it works and what these all terminologies are and what kind of uh, abbreviation you get in React, which one you get in Next.js and all of that. So <laughs> it's really fun. So first, let's understand the build process. So in here, you can see the build process here. So as we have this build process, uh, notice here it's super easy to have this build process. Uh, first and foremost, we have this source code. So this source code is pretty easy. Whatever we write in multiple file of JavaScript and whatnot, this is your source code. Then there is a build phase. Now, usually when we teach the tutorial, we usually don't go for the build phase because we always go and run the dev server. But when you move the files onto Vercel, Netlify, anywhere, uh, that's the point where the build phase actually gets executed. You might have noticed the command uh, npm uh, run build and npm run dev. This is that build phase. Now, once the files are being built, then these files are actually stored on the server. Now, this server could be anything, uh, Vercel, Netlify, even your static server as well. So no problem there. And then we have another uh, major portion, another major contender here, which is client uh, known as web browser. It could be mobile browser as well. We don't really care. Just an overview. Telling you again in advance, don't nitpick the words. Try to understand the generalized concept. That's where we are focusing. So first, uh, let's talk about the CSR. Now, in the world of CSR, first of all, with all the build phases, all the terminologies we are talking about, we'll be dividing them into multiple phases. Now for all of them, almost all of them, the build phase, the source code phase remains same. So we don't have to worry about that, at least as of now. Then we have some phases like we have this uh, build phase. Uh, then we have this server phase and then we have the client phase. All right. 
So the build phase is something where you write the code. The server phase is something when the build is done and we are storing the files. And the client phase is something where actually the client, like the web browser, you are requesting the web page. So first we're gonna be addressing the CSR. Uh, CSR, as we just saw this, this is client side rendering. So the idea was that there is a lot of JavaScript for us and uh, let's just throw every single inch of JavaScript to the client. We send everything to them and the build process actually or the, uh, you can say, the painting process of how the web page will look like will happen on the client side itself. So notice here, I have uh, given some diagrams as well to make sure the learning process is easy. Uh, this rectangle-ish box, that is our HTML. So yes, that's HTML. Uh, these multiple small uh, dots or the circles are JavaScript files. Multiple modules are there. And this big round circle is our CSS. So during the build phase, they are kept like this. So HTML is separate. We are just focusing on writing JavaScript. And then there is a CSS file, either Tailwind or whatever you are using. Then on top of that, there is a server phase. So when we move on to this server phase, uh, simply in the server phase, your HTML is kept separate. No problem at all. Our JavaScript is also kept separate, no problem at all. And our CSS is also kept separate. When it reaches to the client side, first of all, notice this. This is your HTML. So an empty HTML page is sent to the client. Now, after this, we actually throw him some JavaScript. Once the JavaScript reaches to the client, then it's the job of JavaScript to render the web page. So entire web page is built on the client side. If it requires further more JavaScript, it requests to the server. If it requires some of the CSS, it requests to the server. If it needs to build any more thing, that is being requested by that. So this is your CSR, the core React approach that everything will happen through JavaScript and we'll throw it just JavaScript on the client side itself. Everything will happen. Now, since an empty HTML page is thrown at the side of the client, uh, there is nothing for the search engine to actually see or visualize. That's why the most React web pages are really horrible for search engine optimization. There is no content at all. The content actually is generated as somebody visited the web page. So there is nothing on the server which is right there. So this is the approach that we use in the CSR or the client side rendering. Now moving further, we have another one approach. Uh, everybody realized over the time that, hey, this is not a great approach. So we probably need to work with the SSR. Now what the SSR is, again, short form, yes. So I'll show you. This is server side rendering. We got it, SSR, server side rendering. So what happens in the server side rendering, this is really interesting phase. Again, as you can notice, the build phase is same, our HTML is same, our JavaScript is same, and our a uh, simple CSS file is also same. So there is no problem in here. Everything is exactly same. But what happens is, since this is a server side rendering, the rendering instead of happening on the client side, it actually happens on the server side. Now, the thing is that, uh, notice here that this is probably the web page and the client request is, so we send this web page to the client. But if client needs more web page, that client will actually throw you a request and based on that request, this web page will be generated and this web page will eventually be sent to the client. So every time client make a request, web page is rendered on the server and then his web page is being thrown at the client. Now the advantage is great that client don't have to wait for the entire painting to load up on the web page. And by the term painting, I simply means what elements need to be placed at what part. Uh, I consider the web page is just like a canvas, everything just repainted and painted on that. That's how the DOM works. So this is the classic approach of server side rendering. Again, remember, request is being sent from the client side to the server side. Server says, hey, there's a new request. It just downloads all the information, data from the database and everything. And then it paints the page and send the page every time. So all your HTML, CSS, JavaScript is being sent on the client side in just one go. That is your server side rendering. Now, since on the server, we have a higher compute power compared to somebody who is using just a web browser, we actually can do this much, much faster compared to the client. So client has just maybe a mobile browser, doesn't have that much of RAM. So if we do that on the server, it's a very, very fast process. And you can definitely increase the server side capacity and whatnot and do this in just a fraction of a second. But yes, it also takes time because server has to do its magic. So that's what your uh, SSR is. So again, remember, it generates on each request. That is the highlight of this thing, which is SSR. All right, new term. Okay, next is SSG. Again, shortcut, yes. So SSG is static site generation. This is an amazing, amazing process, static site generation. And this has actually changed a lot of how things work. And especially, a lot of people have earned 
thousands and thousands of dollars with this approach because the WordPress websites are default very slow. So we can use this approach of SSG and can make WordPress website or any website that uses any C, uh, CMS, the content management system, and we can make this like thousand times faster. Why? Because we already know what kind of web pages are going to be there. Uh, it's uh, all everything is coming up from the content management system. So we know what data we have. We don't need to do this build every single second. We can just keep the generated page with us and make it faster. So let me tell you. So what happens is in this SSG is uh, we generate on build time. Since we know what the content we are storing in our database, especially sites like WordPress, we can make them thousand times faster. So what happens in this, uh, notice here, this time we have a change in build time. So this is where the build time is. And notice here in the build time, what we are doing, we are generating each page. So notice here, I told you the square is your HTML, then we have this uh, smaller dots as JavaScript and the big dot as a CSS. So in the build time itself, we are generating this page and we are generating this page and these pages are being stored on the server. Yes, this means the build time is going to be excruciating, painfully long build time, but there is an advantage. Since we know that the content is not updating every minute, we know that, for example, a blog page, you don't write blog every single second. You write blog probably once in a day or once in a week, so we know that we don't need to do this build again and again, and if there is a new content updation, we can again do a build time it will be much more faster. So now your server actually don't need to take any load at all. It has all these web pages here and all it needs to do is whenever the client makes a request, uh, we can just go ahead and send him the thing. So this is super, super easy approach. And yes, this is a remarkable approach. I personally did worked on one such client uh, where he was having a lot of property listed up and he was just serving them on WordPress. So we exported everything using the GraphQL uh, handled that on the Gatsby super fast, amazing speed. No plugin could beat that up. We charged him good. So uh, this is basic your SSG approach. Now, this last one is something which uh, now uh, Next.js is providing a lot, which is ISR. Again, shortcut. So we need to find a full phase of it, full words of it. That is incremental static generation. So one of the problem with the uh, static side generation is whenever there's a content which updates, uh, you probably don't have the updation. So probably, for example, if you have, you have said that the build is going to happen every third day of the week, uh, if somebody has updated anything on the fifth day of the week, you don't get that updated content. Either you have to forcefully uh, make that build process happen or whenever the next build will happen, it will take the updated content at that point of time. There is a something difference in the ISR, incremental, uh, incremental static generation. So this is what incremental static regeneration lot of name. So ISR approach is pretty nice. So what happens in the ISR approach is there is a constant cycle of how the build is going to happen. Again, it does cost you a little bit more of money. That's why the Versal build may go up a little bit. Uh, but notice here, I have, not, I have mentioned it here that every after some time, a build phase happens. Now, when this build will happen, uh, you can actually control that maybe after an hour, maybe after every 10 seconds, if you wish, or maybe after two hours, something. So you can design your build phase. The source code is involved a little bit more in the ISR phase. Uh, but notice here, the advantage is pretty much high. You have your build uh, up here, and then on top of that, you have servers. All pages are rendering on the server, and the client always gets updated data. So it's kind of a mix here, but there are always pros and cons of it, which approach you want to go. Do you really uh, want to build that much often? Or whenever you want to do a force build, it's totally up to you. But Next.js actually smartly does this ISR approach. I'll walk you through in the code part as well in upcoming live that how we can just pass on an object in the request and it does make all the updated requests and deduping and whatnot. So we'll definitely talk about that in the upcoming live. This is more of a theoretical. So coming up on to the first revision part of it and some important points. First of all, now you understand you have a better approach of what the CSR is. Uh, for interview purpose as well, you can explain them much better because you understand the topic now. Then we have the static site uh, rendering. Uh, again, we statically render this. The server takes the majority of the load. Uh, that's usually the approach in the next JS as well. Uh, then we have SSG, static site generation. Gatsby is known for it. It does it remarkably well. Then we have ISR, incremental static generation, which is a mix of both having a load on a little bit of server, a little bit of build time and whatnot. Now, coming up onto the point, uh, which, which is better? It's not like CSR is was the first build, so it's a bad approach. A lot of people think that something new is coming up, that means old is bad. No, it's not like that. Each one have some scenario-based use cases. In some cases, if I'm building a SaaS product, 
uh, probably that SaaS dashboard will never see, never be listed on the Google itself. So there is no point of taking that much of load on the server. I can throw that load on the client as well. So there are different approaches for that. So notice here, there are a couple of parameters on based on which you should decide which one is good, which one is bad. The first one being a build time. So is the build time uh, better here? Is it not? So all of this is really, really important. Based on this, you can take decision. Is build time important for you on the server? Is build time important for you on the client side? Based on that, you can take your decision which approach you want to go. Then you have dynamic content. How often your content gets updated? Is it frequent? Is it less frequent? Based on that, you can take decision which approach you want to go. Search engine optimization, how much search engine is valuable for you? If it is too valuable, obviously you really want to have the pages on the server itself. You really cannot afford that everything is being painted on the go. So that's your, then the rendering time. Also in the rendering time, I would recommend which rendering time is important for you. Is the build, build time more important for you? Is from the build to the server time more important to you or from server to the client time? or client should wait, or server should wait, which time is important for you. And again, there is no right and wrong. It's a scenario based thing. Then we have the content updation. How often do you want your content to update or how much often your content actually gets update? Is it a blog? Is it a static site? Is it just a portfolio website? So it depends on how the things actually proceed. So based on these five parameters, you can choose your options. Again, there is no right and wrong. It just is a way of how we write the code. So I hope this video was uh, kind of a valuable. If I would have done this on writing everything, this would be easily a one and hour or a half hour or a two hour video. Uh, but I don't think so that watch time is much more valuable than your actual delivery of the knowledge. So that's why I made it as a video. I pre-prepared the notes uh, to make it easier for you. All right, I hope this video was informative for you and you enjoyed it as well. So do let me know in the comment section which one is for you. Uh, is it interesting? Should I make more such theoretical topic which actually teaches something or should I keep on making the videos where I kill some programming language? All right, so hope you enjoyed it. Let's catch up in the next video.